What's your name? My name is John. John, can I send this to you? Absolutely, please do. J O N or J O H N? J O H N. And after that, you know, Tony and I are in the middle of the new one. Right inside, right now. The new issue of that. Nice. That'll be super. And when that's done, Jerome will be done with his assignment. Uh, you know, we'll keep it going for a while. For at least another couple of teeth, three years. <laughs> Two. Yeah. Well, that's how I draw teeth. <laughs> And this one right here, one of the best single issues I've read in a long Thank time. Thank you. I'd like to point out my favorite thing about this issue is actually on the cover, and that's that Dr. Uh, Doom's gold things go over a suit. Like, like yeah. Which means these are like fasteners. They're like Velcro. Yeah. Like that's how Doom connects his cape with like little snaps. <laughs> and I, I, I laugh so hard, two drops of pee came out. I am here with Matt Fraction at the Heroes Convention. Mr. Fraction, thank you for taking time out to talk to us. Thank you. Um, we're going to go ahead and get rolling here. The first thing we like to ask people is, uh, what's your favorite comic book story? Uh, you know, the, the one I, um, well, there's, that's a really hard question. Um, I have a shelf of stuff that, it, that, that inspired me, stuff that if my house was on fire, they'd be the books that I would save, and uh, uh, it kind of constantly grows, you know. Um, uh, I love... Uh, the Hernandez brothers. I love uh, Jim Woodring. I love the old Raw. I love Charles Burns and uh, uh, a bunch of Alan Moore stuff and uh, you know, um, um, City Blast. There's, there's a lot of great stuff. I, I don't think I have any one favorite. It, it kind of depends on you know the mood that I'm in. Whether it's you know, Kirby's Fourth World exactly. stuff or uh, uh, you know high and low culture, both are represented uh, on the, the battlefield of my heart when it I comes hear. to that stuff. Well, if you had to grab the one, which is the first one you would grab? I'd grab a Fear Agent, uh, awesome. probably Reignition, <laughs> by my friend Rick Remender. Old one up um, there in the background. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all I want to say is I love your Punisher. Thank you, thank you. This is Rick. This is the guy who's co-writing with me now, too. So. It's now Great job. It's our Punisher. Now, what's your name? Sebastian. Sebastian. We met a couple days ago, didn't we? Friday? No. You didn't come by on Friday? No. I met another Sebastian. I met two Sebastians. <laughs> I met Imagine two, that. I met two guys named Cornelius yesterday. Cornelia. Cornelia. S-E-B? Yes. A-S-T-I-A. How do you spell it? I-A-N. I'm glad I didn't screw it up. <laughs> Sebastian, can I get a picture? Totally can. Let me take it. You want to jump in with me? Oh, yeah. Thanks. How you doing? What's the best way to... Here, just can you just lean in over here? Right here. Sounds like those totally like our have a bitch in summer photograph. <laughs> Take care, man. So, what inspired you to get into comics? Uh, I love telling stories, um, and I, I love words, and I love pictures. So it was a, a perfect opportunity to, uh, you know, comics do both. Um, and I love film, and, and, and have been obsessed with movies and comics my whole life. Um, so it's just, I just wanted to tell stories, you know. It's John with an H. Yes. J-O-H-N-S-O. Not old enough to read that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> I must cover it with blood and dripping off the UPC codes. Boom, I don't put it. 2031. I'm going to get a little older. Delusions of green. You have to have a specific sensibility for that one. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for coming out, John. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was great meeting you. Meet you, sir. Uh, well, what do you think about what's going on with comics today? Uh, I think I think more people and more different people are reading them, so that's pretty great. Um, it's a pretty diverse. You know, uh, I love going into bookstores on Saturday and seeing comic aisles full of little girls and kids reading comics. Is this your last work on the Punisher? If uh, if I leave, it will be strictly for logistics purposes and not for any lack of love. Right. Uh, I hope you stick around for a while. Rick, Rick and I are having a blast doing it together. So. So when I get a book, I can just sit there and get a big big story out of it. But I love it. Um, I keep trying to get Marvel to put out a, a, a book of his book, to put out the Jigsaw stuff in black and white. Uh, no, Matt and I are co-writing The Punisher now. It's, it's so wicked that um, The Punisher ends up killing that, that guy's girlfriend and never bothers to tell him that he's... It's coming back. <laughs> it's coming back to haunt him. You don't get to do that and get away with it. Yeah. It's all coming back. Keep reading. That was... Uh... Well, you know, I mean, they used to do that. They did that story back in the day where... Jigsaw had him under mind control. He went crazy, he killed jaywalkers, and he killed a cab driver for running a red light. 
Like, that was always his weakness. His weakness was always that he's just a man. Right. And you can get into his head, and when he's a loaded gun, you can figure out ways to pull right. his trigger. Like, that always, as a kid, terrified me. So I knew when I took the book over, like, I wanted to really, res- like, pay homage to those early Andrew and Stern and uh, or, or so brain fried. All those early, the Chuck, Chuck Dixon stuff and uh, um, yeah, Stephen Grant, Jesus Christ, it's going to happen. Mike Fair and all that stuff where, like, he was a guy who knew the Stoko killer, but every now and again you could get into his head and point the gun. You know, a gun's not dangerous sitting on the table. It's dangerous when a psychopath picks it up. Um, so that was always where we were headed from the very beginning was like establishing this guy's a loaded gun and somebody got in his head and pulled trigger but it's all but there's going to be held to pick so keep reading and I promise we're going to deal with it thank you thank you hey man and lastly I know you have a full plate as full as it can be but uh, what's going on that you want to tell people about uh, uh, Iron Man and uh, Thor stuff and X-Men and, and Casanova just wrapped up and I'm, I'm just kind of researching and, you know, uh, uh, doing a lot of mainstream stuff and trying to figure out some more, create our own stuff to get out there in the world. So kind of keep things, uh, keep things fresh, keep from getting bored, keep things lively. Sounds good, man. Well, you're ready to blow up on the scene. I keep telling everybody you are the next big thing. Um, you know, I have to thank Jeff Clock every day for talking about how great Casanova was and, and, and getting me to pick it up. Because I was following you on Iron Fist, and uh, and that was good. But then I got into Casanova, and, and it's just like, okay, this mind is this guy's mind is just amazing. His work is great. Thank you very much. And I, I hunted down everything everything I picked up with your name on it from. Five fifths of science to, to Iron Man to Thor to everything is, is just great. So Thank you very much. Thank we know you. big things are coming for you. Thank you for uh, taking time to talk to us on no the uh, Mutantville Players Club. No we appreciate it. This has all of the other stories. There's three full, pay- three full issues that I've We're getting pretty that efficient not, at this. Uh, oh, yeah. You know that, like, you know in cartoons when, like, work happens and you hear, like, dun 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 that's there. the worst signal. These stories fill those gaps. So there's uh, a bunch of stories in there by me. <laughs> and I'm <laughs>